You are watching the ACC on ESPN. As Florence bears down on the Carolina coast, sixth ranked North Carolina has made the trek down to Tallahassee to take on number two Florida State as powerhouses collide at the Seminole Soccer Complex this evening. Welcome in to the Seminole Soccer Complex. He's Trevor DeGroote. I'm Mario Masudi. Trevor, two of the best teams in the country, two very potent attacks. First for the Tar Heels, Alessia Russo. She can do it all. Yeah, top three player on this UNC squad. Certainly a player you have to watch out for. An English U-20 teamer who actually got a bronze medal at the World Cup. So she is very dangerous. Had three goals in that tournament, but she hasn't gotten a goal yet. But you have to watch out for her. She's got a very powerful strike and can score from distance. Knowles have to keep her in check. On the other end, how can you forget Yuji Zhao? Four goals this season. She's been dynamite for the Knowles. And she's a freshman. I mean, she's come in and absolutely taken over this squad with her enthusiasm and, of course, her skilled play. Four goals leading the team and leads in points as well. She has been so dynamic and not just scoring, but also helping her teammates out. Very good at cutting and very technical. UNC has got a lot on their hands tonight with her. North Carolina, one of the all-time great programs in college soccer, but no team has beaten the Tar Heels more times than the Seminoles, who have seven in their last 11 meetings. It's the Knowles and the Heels from Tallahassee. We continue our countdown to kick coming up. Over 3,300 fans packed the Seminole Soccer Complex just a week ago as the Knowles and the Gators battled from Tallahassee. Another fantastic crowd as the Knowles and the Heels get ready to do battle here. The ACC opener between both teams, the second straight season. These two teams have met to start ACC play. First for North Carolina. This is how they'll line up in the 4-3-3. A little bit different than the 3-4-3 you're used to seeing from Anson Doran's coach team. Julia Ashley, the stud in the back line, she has been phenomenal. Alicia Russo moves to the middle tonight. Otto, Bailey, Pinto in the midfield. Fox, Bingham, Ruben Moy, Ashley Leshnack gets the start in goal. For the homestanding Seminoles, they've been using the 4-1, 4-1 all season long. Brooke Bollinger back in the net. Pavlisko, Quika, Berkeley, one of the best center back tandems in all of college soccer. Patton on the back line. Carl Zhao, Tillman, Castellanos, Howell. Kirsten McFarland, the hero against the Gators. She starts up top, two goals in her last three games. The Knowles and the Heels meeting for the 40th time in each program's history. North Carolina holding that advantage, 27-8-4. Florida State, of course, though, has beaten UNC seven times in the last 11 meetings. The last year was the Heels getting the better of the Knowles twice. First, a 1-0 win right here in Tallahassee. That snapped a 36-match unbeaten streak for Florida State at home. And then they met again in the ACC quarterfinals up in Cary. The Heels victorious 2-1. But up until then, Trevor, Florida State had dominated this series over the last decade. Yeah, it really gets, just goes to prove the uh, just how good Mark Krikorian has been to this program and really challenging his squad over his four, now his 14th season, his last 13 years. Just really wanted to raise that level of expectation and challenging themselves to get to the dominant program that he has wanted this club to be at. And the, obviously the 2014 National Championship speaks for itself, but to challenge the top dog in the ACC with 21 national championships in North Carolina is a way you do that. And Florida State certainly earned their respect for the Tar Heels those last several years. Opportunity for Florida State early as Quika sends the long ball, headed away by Ashley. One of the best players in the ACC, Julie Ashley. What will be important early is how do these two teams set the tone of this game? Can Florida State possess in Carolina's attacking third? Or will Carolina pressure up high, cause chaos, do what they've done with three forwards? And that's cause turnovers and turn those into counterattack goals. Yeah, just really being in position to try and utilize that to their advantage. And of course, Florida State has been just so ball dominant in this season. That's earned them that 7-0-1 record. And they've really kept their opponents on their heels in the entire match for the majority of it. There's the speed from Russo. One of the top players in the country, Alessia Russo, the English international. Her and Anna Patton, teammates on that English U-20 team that won the bronze, the highest finish ever for England in the U-20 World Cup. Certainly England has something to look forward in to in both of those players. Anna Patton, 
and Russo. Of course, both have only played in four matches. Both are in their fifth match tonight. Amazingly enough, as much as we talked, obviously, in the pregame, Ari, about Russo being such a, ball sco uh, a goal scorer, Patton is the one with the goal right now for Florida State, and she's on the defense. So she's got a little bit of a feather in her cap for her fellow Englishman. The officials tonight, Nick Balser will be the head official. Arnell Selman and Shao Li are your other two assistants. And then alternate official David Mock tonight to keep an eye on Nick Balser, the head man in the middle. Officiating this one, he'll be blowing his whistle often, I'm sure, as the ACC gets extremely physical at times and you're not expecting anything different between the two most consistent programs over the last decade in the ACC. Well, of course, both challenge themselves against non-conference play with great, great games to challenge themselves, but yeah, it certainly intensifies here. Jow, early look, fires high and away. And that's what Florida State wanted to do. Mark McCorian feels like in the middle, he's got an advantage. He can control the pace in the center midfield. Yuji Zhao, of course. Casey Tillman moving inside. Dana Castellanos moving outside to right mid. And then Jalen Howell, the freshman, who's been fantastic for Florida State, is that number six. Yeah, they certainly have been all systems go in the center. And really Krikorian trying to mold and find the right system here going forward. And now it's where it counts, obviously, in the ACC play, where it really makes the difference for the postseason. Anson Dorrance has a little trick up his sleeve tonight, too, as he moves Alessia Russo to the middle, a center forward. Bridget Andrzejewski moving out wide to the right side. And freshman Rachel Jones gets her first career start on the left side here in UNC's 4-3-3 offensive system. And really, he has a lot of leadership in that center with Bailey and Otto and Pinto. Even though Pinto's a freshman, but certainly Bailey and Otto, top probably two of the top three or five players that he has on this roster that are really going to try and solidify and lock down that middle of the field where FSU has been so dominant with their opponents this season. What do you want to see from this game, Trevor? What are the keys to the game for the Knowles and the Heels? Well, for the Knowles, it's about really just running the middle and trying to control what you've really been doing all season long, which is running. There's going to be some open spaces. Carolina's going to probably try and look for the center of the mid, but there are going to be pockets where they can go out wide, spread it out, and they really love playing out wide, so that kind of fits right into the wheelhouse for FSU. And for UNC, you got to stop FSU's dribble penetration and really prevent them from really dominating and trying to get some ball possession yourself because that's just really been what FSU's been good at all season long. Corner won by the Seminoles, the 54th corner this season. Castellanos will do, it, do the honors as she drives it in the middle of the box. Quick header, Patton. Just high. Almost had shades of the game against UCLA in which the Knolls struck so early thanks to the head of Anna Patton. Well, Castellanos, is, for every corner and set piece she has taken, she has rarely missed the mark. In fact, it's pretty much been exactly where she wanted to put it every single time, and right there was no exception. Anna Patton actually framed it pretty nicely in terms of direction, but just had to get it a little more down, just too much elevation, and the angle was just a little too high. Individual matchups, both head coaches made points to make note of. They both believe it'll be so important to see with two teams this good, which team's individual step up and win those 1v1s. Against UCLA, Florida State dominated the number two team in the country. 1v1s were so important in the midfield, and Yuji Zhao put on a show. No question why she was named ACC Player of the Week following that those matches against UCLA and USC. Pass wants the long ball, sniffed out by Wooten Moy. Both of his defenses have been very strong this season. UNC's given up just five goals. They're playing now in their ninth match. Florida State, the best defense statistically in the country so far, have given up just one goal all year. And that came against UCLA in the first half. Other than that, Florida State's defense has been outstanding, and they've had to make shift a little bit without Quika, who was with the Finnish national team. They've missed out on a couple of players here and there, Anna Patton making her way back in. But this is the four that Mark Krikorian wants, and he's felt really good about it. And they played practically flawless. I mean, they've just done an excellent job recovering if the ball gets behind them to come back and sweep and just clear the ball away to reset their defense. And then we can't forget Brooke Bollinger. I mean, she's done an excellent job in net as a registered freshman keeper who's really just allowed one goal. That was a almost a fluky goal if you really take a look against UCLA. Really nothing she could do about it, so she has played almost perfect soccer in net as well.
Pinto controls in the midfield, one of the best freshmen in the country. Top five recruit coming into the year. The Tar Heels finishing with the number three ranked class. Early cross in, opportunity potentially for North Carolina. And in the end, Alessia Russo not able to get a clean foot on it. But I do think this is going to be Florida State's biggest challenge as you look at Anson Durant, who, of course, 40 seasons all with North Carolina. And he has earned his 1,000th victory earlier this season overall. And the man's just been the face of soccer and women's soccer on the collegiate level. And if FSU fans need a reference, I mean, Bobby Bowden kind of comes to mind for how dominant you've been in one sport for several years, but he's kind of surpassed that tenure with 40 years. Bobby only had 34 to give FSU a little bit of, for FSU fans to have a little bit of a reference point. Anson Dorrance, arguably the best college coach in the history of both men's and women's soccer, started his career with the North Carolina men's team before taking on the women's program, and he's been there ever since, now in his 40th season. And think about that. Half that over half that time, he's won a national championship. 21 national titles. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> we, almost, we almost said the same thing there. And yet, they, and yet they haven't won one since 2012. So he, this team is hungry. I mean, this team has really got a chip on its shoulder, I believe. And, you know, the last two games, they've been a bit snake bitten. They're going to come out firing. Carl slicing and dicing through the box, doing well individually. Carl pushes it out to Tillman. She goes down to the turf. Berkeley races onto the loose ball. Now watch Malia Berkeley, a center back with offensive ball control. Carl was making her way back towards the ball. And in the end, the touch just a little bit too heavy. And as good as Dorrance has been for North Carolina over a, four decades, Mark Krikorian over 14 seasons has been, if not as good, right underneath. Mark Krikorian won national title, has made eight college cups, helped Florida State really assert its dominance in the ACC from 2010 to 2015. Five straight ACC championships, five straight College Cup appearances. Zhao, Dulcer says, get up. And now North Carolina on the break. Pushed ahead to Russo. It's a one-on-one -on -one battle, Russo and Berkeley. Berkeley wins, and it'll be Bollinger who clears. Just a nice job by Berkeley of keeping Russo honest a little bit with where she wanted to go with the ball as she was trying to run it down. and. Does the smart thing by giving it back to Bollinger. And that's just something, as we've alluded to, how good FSU's defense has been, Aria. How good Berkeley's been, and of course, Quika being the team captain. They've just really solidified the center, those two in particular, to really make it tough on, a, on the opposition's attacks to really find anything. But I do think they're getting their hardest challenge with the collection and the compilation of talent off, and offensive skill that North Carolina possesses tonight. That will be one of the keys to the game. How does Florida State's back line adjust to the pressure? from UNC, organized pressure, Anson Dorrance calls it. They like to create some havoc, get it out to the speedy playmakers up top. Russo, one of those players, as she controls. Angles her way, creates some space. Now Otto, sniffed out by Berkeley. One-on-one -on -one battle between Berkeley and Otto. Handball, as McFarland thought she stepped in front of it. McFarland, the sophomore out of Powell, Ohio. A slow start to the season, but two goals in her last three matches. Knocked one in against UCLA and then against Florida. Johnny on the spot as Castellanos' shot was blocked, and she was right there with one minute to go in the match to finish home the follow-up, the rebound, and Florida State defeats Florida 1-0. Yeah, she does a nice job overall of playing her back to the ball and trying to turn and shoot. And then on that goal against Florida, she did a nice job of rebounding with the awareness and just charging up. That's another facet of her game that you don't really see a lot of times because she's, like we mentioned, mostly back to the ball, just waiting for it to come to her and then set up everybody else. North Carolina 5-2-1. and one. Have dropped both of their road contests this season. All of that coming last weekend on the West Coast, dropping a tough decision to Santa Clara in which the game-tying goal was waved off due to an offside late. And then the number one team in the country, Stanford, defeated the Tar Heels in overtime just two minutes in. The Heels, though, fighting tooth and nail with 
what many are calling the best team in college soccer. No breaks for UNC, though. Number seven, Santa Clara. Number one, Stanford. Welcome to Tallahassee. Number two, Florida State. You'd like to think it doesn't get easier as time goes on, but certainly here in the ACC, it really gets aggressive all the time, as you see in Dana Castellanos challenging for the ball against Emily Fox. Fox playing defense. And we've seen her a little bit already in this match come up the wing a little bit on the left side, so she may be an aggressive attacker for Dorrance's squad tonight. Now UNC on a set piece. Andrew Jeske gets ahead on it towards the back half of the 18, and it's cleared away by Carl. Florida State's enjoyed large amounts of possessions early in non-conference schedule, but Mark Krikorian felt like there would be moments in this game where his team didn't have the ball all the time. He felt like, though, that his roster is equipped much better than in years past to be able to handle not having the ball as much. And from a defensive standpoint, I think that's the biggest challenge FSU faces is their patience and how much they can withstand Carolina's attacks because these two teams are so very, very balanced in how much offensive skill they each possess. So they're going to get their opportunities, I think, each tonight. But so far, we really haven't seen outside of Patton's header on the corner by Castellanos really an offensive chance yet. So both defenses are really holding up strongly as well. So I think it could be a very balanced game, really one in the midfield, maybe even outside of the 18 on both sides, to try and maybe get some runs and expose someone off base. Castellanos, now Patton. Deflected away, nice work by Dorian Bailey. Rather, that was Rachel Jones. About 15 minutes into this ball game, Arya Masudi, Trevor DeGroat, and our entire Atlantic Coast Conference extra crew here. Seminole Soccer Complex, two of the best teams in the country going head to head tonight. UNC defeated Florida State twice last year, but before that, Florida State had been absolutely dominant in this series. As Mark Krikorian said, if you want to get to where you go, you're probably going to have to see the Tar Heels more than once this season. Excellent ball, Quika and Russo in a foot race. Quika clears. Very wise knowing that that ball goes past the end line. It's a corner. Instead, just clears it to the touch line for a throw in. Very, very wise to set your defense up. And the parent tries to try to squeeze North Carolina. Pinto has the ball dispossessed, cleared away by the Knowles. Not a whole lot of flow to this one in the early goings. Florida State hasn't been able to enjoy much possession. North Carolina still trying to find some offensive prowess. And in the end, Trevor, this game is going to be probably one in the midfield. Whichever midfield is able to dictate tempo and create chances for some dangerous attackers probably is going to find the goal that ends up being the game winner. And it may be very challenging to find some open space. It may be wide for Florida State with how UNC's formatted their their midfield with their triangle. So what you may have to do if you're both squads is to really go long ball, go over the top, try and beat them on the run. Pavlisko does well to earn back possession for Florida State. Now Tillman. That was a beautiful pass by McFarland back to the center, finding Tillman and then reestablishing possession, witnessing the pressure. Berkeley up ahead. McFarland not there. It's the first time Florida State's been undefeated heading into ACC play since 2013. The Knowles 7-0-1. The only non-victory is a whistle and a foul going the other way. McFarland guilty. The only non-victory for Florida State. 
A nil-nil draw in double overtime against the Trojans of USC, who, oh, by the way, are in the top five now this season. Their only other non-victory for the Trojans. You never know. Both teams can be seeing each other down the line in the College Cup. And right there, almost a near disaster for North Carolina. Those are the mistakes you really don't want to see. Luckily, no harm, no foul. Got away with it as McFarland tried to be a little aggressive. And how could you not with the ball potentially going right to your foot if you charge and maybe take a quick strike at the goal? Samantha Leshnack. Ready for her goal kick. Leshnack, the senior out of Liberty Township, Ohio. Oh, wow. What a missed opportunity for North Carolina. Andrew Zuski had a shot at the net wide open. Florida State did a poor job on the defensive end. Bollinger tries to come up and swipe it. She could have had a shot at a one-timer, but couldn't control. FSU's Jalen Howell actually came down a little bit shaking on that before that play even began. So limping a little bit as of now. I have to watch out for her. So an ear opportunity for UNC in the early moments of this first half. Patton doing great work. Ball taken away by the Tar Heels. Gloriana Villalobos checks in for Florida State. The sophomore out of San Jose, Costa Rica. Has shown flashes of great offensive skill in moments this year as a stoppage of play at Otto might have a cut. You see assistant coach for UNC Bill Palantino in his 38th season as the chief assistant. Morgan Goff also checking in for UNC in this one. Villalobos, an opportunity, numbers, Tillman, can she get on the end of it? Inside the box, some razzle-dazzle, and it's taken away. Villalobos probably could have done a lot better with that initial pass. Yeah, too deep down towards the end line. Emily Fox doing a nice job after giving the ball to Villalobos on the knockdown to recover and get the takeaway to try and flip the field. Russo and Berkeley running after it. And Berkeley again wins the foot race. And Bollinger not with the best of clearances. Well, she gets a lucky break, though. Now a tackle, no whistle. Patton wins the ball back. Howell drives it across Pavlisko. She has acres of space. Speed on display from Pavlisko. Ball taken away. Momentarily by Andrew Jeske. Pavlisko does well, earns the throw in for the Knowles. Goff coming in for Otto. This is a UNC team that frequently substitutes. Via Lobos, now Tillman. Jow finds some space. Drives to her left. Nice little cutback. Now Howell and now Pavlisko. This is what Florida State wants to do, possess the ball in UNC's half. Yeah, just beautiful footwork and cutting by Zhao, who just, that's her specialty. Just evading, evading tacklers, charging for the ball. She just does a magnificent job of just working her way around that and finding another teammate to distribute. Leshnack clears. Now Patton. 
And her header finds no one. Just three shots total so far in this first half as Otto races back in. Two teams, Trevor, that combined to average nearly 39 shots a game amongst the leaders in college soccer, but both defenses have been so good. This game is so physical. Shots might be hard to come by. It'll be quality over quantity. Yeah, yeah you're going to find probably tonight that it's going to balance out and probably go about midway to about maybe 15 max perhaps for both squads. I mean, this late in the match, you only see two shots for Florida State and one for UNC. And we're at the half, pretty much the halfway point of this match. So, yeah, certainly opportunities will be hard to come by. And Florida State will, if both teams for certain, have to cash in on some opportunities, break free if you can. The Seminoles, number one in the country, and fewest goals allowed at just one. Earlier this season, they had a streak of over 507 minutes without giving up a goal. As a matter of fact, if you add in today's time, in the last 1,075 minutes, Florida State's given up just two goals as a back line, one against Stanford in the Sweet 16 a year ago and one against UCLA this season. It has been unbelievable what Mark Krikorian has been able to do with those four in the back. Pinto pushes the ball up ahead. Now Fox. Fox, nice little cross. Andrew Jeske not able to get ahead on it. Florida State amongst, as I mentioned, the best in the country. This defensive. Quika and Berkeley have honestly been the bell cows in the middle, but Pavlisko, a freshman, started every game this season. She had an excellent performance against Deanne Rose, the, the dynamite Canadian from the Gators. They've yeah. been so good, they've been able to move Gabby Carl forward into the attacking third and move Anna Patton, who plays center back, out, out, out wide to the right back. Yeah, and don't forget Jalen Howell, who actually is a good holding midfielder as well, who also helps out a little bit if... You know, it's necessary for her to bail out some of her teammates as well. And, of course, Brooke Bollinger has just been fantastic in net. She's come away with some, a couple fantastic saves, though she hasn't had too much action in these eight games. She's done a magnificent job as well, being practically flawless. Big body, very athletic, and does a good job of outletting the ball as well. She's really got a bright future here at Florida State, as she is just a redshirt freshman. Rachel Dorwart goes down. And now UNC will have a set piece from a dangerous spot. Pavlisko called for the clip. Yeah, nowhere close to the ball. That'll get called pretty much every time. And this is the best chance and look UNC has gotten. Lada Wubin Moy will do the honors. It was a set piece last year in Tallahassee that led to the game winning goal, the only goal of the match. UNC winning 1 0, top of the box, Pinto. Can she find space? Fires and airmails. Goal kick, Florida State. Nice job by Dallas Dorsey coming in off the bench of pressuring Pinto, needing to go high and needing to rush that ball. Just beautiful work by FSU on that short free kick. Super sub, Dallas Dorsey. How, how nice is it, Trevor, to have someone come off the bench who has 15 career goals it's pretty, it's pretty crazy when you think about how much pr production's coming off FSU's bench, and you still have a few upperclassmen there, too. Nice job by FSU's defense to block in front of Pinto for another shot. Trying to turn it. Villalobos goes down and a foul called. Dorsey, 15 goals in her career. Florida State's been so good off the bench, the depth on display. That nearly 40% of the goals this season for the Noles have come off the bench. When you win championships, it's not about your starting 11. It's really what you got coming off the bench. It's a total team effort. Tillman finds Zhao, who's finding some space. Zhao inside the 18. Ball poked away. Leshnack there to cover. 
Once again, Emily Fox proving herself to be quite a difference maker on that left side, coming down with speed. And honestly, she's actually a, a natural midfielder. You know, she as we've seen, she's already attacking so high with the ball up the left flank, trying to get her teammates involved and try to set up crosses. So she has a lot of speed up that left side for Florida State to deal with, and she's been a big difference maker thus far. Aggressive slide by Dorsey. Leads the ball to Carl's feet. Carl still fighting for it. Comes up with another battle. Quika drives the ball ahead. Dorsey knocks it to herself. Now Carl. Beautiful job splitting the difference by Dorsey to win that ball back. And you can see how athletic and quick this UNC team is on the backs of the Knolls every time they have the ball. Yeah, the Florida State's really been able to dominate their opponents this season, just squeezing them and just dictating pace with ball possession. But with, with what UNC's been doing so far, they're going to have a tough time because there's just not a lot of room to breathe for Florida State with the ball. They're going to have to be moving a lot tonight. And Anson Dorrance told us he wanted to stop. He used a basketball term, dribble penetration, to stop Florida State and not allow the middle of the field to be ambushed like the Knolls are able to do. And you can see that emphasis right now as UNC is quick to close space every time the Knolls get the ball within 25 yards of the net. Excellent ball through, one-on-one -on -one opportunity, shot, back of the net. Carolina leads. Rachel Jones knocks in the goal. One nil, Carolina. Florida State wanted a offsides call. They were throwing their arms up as if that was the case. It was a beautiful ball by Russo and Jones just comes flying. Beats Patton on the far side and just kisses, his off, kisses it off the post for UNC to take a huge 1-0 lead here on the road. The first goal of Rachel Jones' career comes at a paramount time for North Carolina. Her first goal is only the second goal the Seminoles have allowed all season long. Villalobos, now Howell. And this is the first deficit for FSU all season long as well. So now we're going to see how they deal with adversity for the first time in 2018. Nice one to Pavlisko. Lots of blue in front. Now Dorsey. She's deflected. Tillman earns a corner. Gritty work by the senior. Excellent interplay to make that ball happen and make that opportunity happen. Working themselves into the 18 box and Dorsey almost gains control to where she could have taken a shot. Nice saving effort by the back line of UNC prevents that as Florida State gets a corner opportunity. They're gonna have to turn it up a notch now because UNC had really taken control the last 15 minutes. Ball spending a lot of time in the middle but UNC with a lot more chances. And you see the speed advantage on display as Jones really just burning Patton. On an excellent diagonal run, she able to finish. Berkeley wants to help respond. Howell, her header, wasn't able to really direct any force onto it, and it lollipops for a UNC goal kick. Yeah, pretty far outside, near the 18, probably about 15 yards from the goal. And maybe Powell was suspecting someone to challenge her. She was really free, though. Olivia Bergau enters for Casey Tillman. The 63rd career game for Bergau. Earned the start against South Alabama on Sunday. Notched a goal against the Jaguars. Florida State winning that one 2 0. Big crowd on hand. The Tar Heels striking first. Thanks to the first career goal from Rachel Jones. It's the first time Florida State's trailed all season. And you just see the pressure that UNC possesses and just that they employ. Really squeezing and suffocating FSU. Villalobos finds a pocket of space. Now Carl. Again Villalobos. 
UNC does well to track back and close down the gaps. Long pass taken away. Fox again. Now Carolina. Can they find numbers in the counter? <laughs> Two on three, Carl slips it to Dorsey. Opportunity, Dorsey, left-footed shot high. Dallas Dorsey's going to want that one back. A great find. And Dorsey perhaps panicked just a little bit. Leaned back and airmailed. What a remarkable little tricky footwork by Carl. Really feeding Dorsey beautifully, but yeah, leans back, doesn't put a lot of force into that ball, tries to lob it over Leshnak's head, and certainly did that, but by a wide, by a far margin over that post as well. Perhaps driving it towards that far post may have been a better option. But Florida State's gonna really have to make these chances count. It's only their fourth shot. And those chances are not gonna come as often as they've had in the past several games against the likes of Florida and South Alabama, their last game where they had over 30 shots Kimball coming into the ball game, her 74th career match as a Tar Heel. Patton, fancy footwork, finds Howell. Howell tries to find Z Jow and it's intercepted. Here come the heels. Quika does well to step in front of that pass. Going up against Otto. Four shots apiece for the Knolls and the heels. But it's been UNC who's found the net. Ashley Jones knocking it off the right post and into the net. 1-0 so far, Tar Heels. And ultimately, I believe it's just their organization for North Carolina that is just su far superior at this moment in time. FSU, I think, relying a little bit too much on their individual skill. Certainly not something you shy away from with how much talent they possess, but you got to put it all together against a, an established powerhouse like North Carolina to come out victorious. Quiga wants a long fire. But Leshnack comfortably watches that one sail wide. Madison Schultz and Zoe Rade checking in for North Carolina. And Michaela Edwards for the Knowles. Schultz, the junior out of Edmonds, Washington, her 56th game. Christina Lynch runs onto the field, so mass substitutions being used by both teams.
UNC doing a nice job of really closing down the gaps of where Florida State wants to work the ball at this moment. Nice move by Berkeley. That's one of her signatures. Charging Berkeley does up. excellent. Still on the run. Now Dorsey, right side of the 18, cleared away. Bingham getting that head in there at the right time. Trying to feed Via Lobos. Freshman of freshman action, action is Pavlisko and Lynch. Playing a little two-man game. Nice switch of the field by Florida State. The Knowles have struggled to find consistent possession in the attacking third of UNC, something they've had a lot of experience with this season, being able to do that. And Lynch and Villalobos not on the same page. And UNC making life extremely uncomfortable for Florida State right now. As soon as Florida State gets any time on the ball, it's quickly closed down. And this is what coaches talk about. The speed of the game changes at this level. You don't have a lot of time. You need more one and two touch passing. Well, certainly with conference play, I mean, these teams know each other so well. These coaches know each other so well. So they're very prepared of what each squad's gonna do. But I think with North Carolina, and FSU really hasn't played a complete team quite like the Tar Heels yet. And they're just so skilled and so balanced at every single level that they're just not going to let you dictate the game. That's why UNC is so successful. Pat. Ball into the box. Dorsey brings it down. Trying to turn to find an angle. Patton fires off the face of a heel. Howell. Patton into the box. Dorsey. And again, Carolina's defense coming up big. Yeah, you saw Dorsey there have the ball for a considerable amount of time inside the box. You need a teammate to help and bail you out to try and give a different direction, perhaps. That way they can get a clear shot. Someone's got to come up and help. Berkeley long ball. Headed away, Julia Ashley. Bingham with a nervous clearance. And in the end, Dorwart does well to earn a throw in by Carolina. Subbing into Carolina, number two, Sydney Spruill. Carolina and Florida State. 40th meeting between the two teams. Of course, Florida State and UNC having met so many times. Spruill entering the game. Tough for FSU to find possession in the inside, so they're trying to work it around the horn. Fortunately, a little carelessness by Patton. Gives the ball back to UNC. Five minutes to go in the half. Florida State still looking for signs of life, North Carolina hasn't really had much of the ball at all in this one, but it was the counter strike, the counter attack from Rachel Jones that's led to this 1-0 lead. Florida State's actually outshot North Carolina 6-4 on the evening. Florida State, I'd say, has probably even controlled more of the possession, even if it's not, as an offside called, even if it's not what they're used to. Florida State's dictated the tempo of this game a little bit. UNC, though, finding that one opportunity and credit the Tar Heels. They've made a mess of the midfield in the attacking third for Florida State, really jumbling things up after one or two passes. The Knoll's not able to connect. Yeah, they've been able to really lock it down right on their 18 line and really not allow Florida State to really enter that zone and to really pull off a few shots. Because usually they just have an, an, amount, an amazing amount of shots game in, game out, but they haven't had that yet in this game.
They just do a, such a good job of controlling it, as you see right there, trying to win the ball back, flying into that zone and battling for possession, disrupting Florida State's attack. Howell does well to turn her defender. Now Villalobos. Out wide, Bergal. She sends it back towards the middle of the box. It falls for Lynch. Pavlisko. Villalobos checks and receives. Lynch, now Pavlisko. Howell. And again, UNC just not letting any pockets of space form near the 18. Berkeley long ball, and Leshnack crashes, has trouble with it, but able to, avo to avoid disaster. Well, you wonder if Christina Lynch on that near side is anywhere close to that ball. She may have a one touch and just a strike in. That's a scary moment for the UNC senior. <laughs> if Lynch is just a few yards more to her right, that could be a goal and a disastrous opportunity, as you said, Aria, for UNC to really give, to really just guide FSU right back into the game and equalize. Something we want to keep an eye on, as you saw Leshnack having some trouble with the ball. Something interesting to keep, that Carolina has done this season is they've played two keepers all season long as Leshnack gets the first half and then freshman Claudia Dickey comes in for the second half. Dorrance did say that it's not necessarily what they're going to continue to do, but so far through eight games, ball into the box. Nice job by Ashley to bring it down. Bequica cuts it away offside. It is called a late whistle there by Balser, who didn't look over to his official on the sideline and see the flag was up. But the two yes. keepers, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's a unique situation having a, a freshman able to get her some some opportunity as well. I mean, that is the future of your program. Yeah, it's the bridge. It's basically a bridge for Dickey for potentially maybe next year to really get some reps in now, to get some quality minutes in. And they and, and Dorrance believes in both keepers, and that's why he he has the confidence to really give Dickey a chance. Balls are stopping the clock. Is Ashley wasting some time and delaying? And I think Florida State, as you saw Gloriana Villalobos argue a little bit, we wanted the ball, we wanted to keep going with it. And so Ashley, lucky, stays out of the official's pocketbook. And now Quika, an opportunity to send the ball towards the box. Middle of the 18, it's an excellent ball. Sproul with the left foot. Blasts it away. It'll be a Florida State throw-in. Jalen Howell did a nice job battling for position, and she gets ahead on that ball. But once again, North Carolina recognizing where the angle is and where they are, where the net is, to deny FSU a clear chance. One minute to go here in the half. Carolina leads it 1-0. Otto does well to earn the ball. Punches it ahead, Rade. And Quika, the Finnish international there, quickly to make a, a stop, and it's a throw in for North Carolina. Yeah, Quika, Berkeley, Patton, Pavlisko, all four of them in that back line for FSU are gonna have to put pedal to the metal and really work their way back all night long. UNC just has so much speed. They will make you pay if they see that ball floating out there. And an opportunity at the net is upon them. Goff to Woot Moy, Leshnack. We're just blasted to the middle of the field as the first half comes to an end. Rachel Jones. Her goal is the difference so far. As they lead Florida State 1-0. Florida State, not only the first time they've been trailing at the half this season, it's the first time they've trailed at any point this season. 1-0, North Carolina leads Florida State. Halftime starts next in Tallahassee. 
can world-renowned artist Red Hong Yi use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank, all while creating a masterpiece made of tea leaves? Yes, but this isn't for just anyone. It's for the strongest man in her life. Life lived Red's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. This Geico ad is intended only for people who grew up in the 80s. Renting VHS tapes is dope. So is saving money with Geico. And their 24-7 access to licensed agents is totally fresh. Word. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. When two of the best teams in all of the land meet in Tallahassee, you get this type of crowd. The parking garage is filled to the brim. Inside the Seminole Soccer Complex also filled up. The Knolls had over 3,300 against the Gators last week. You got to imagine this is pretty close. This is approaching 3,000 at least as fans have again been filing behind the goalposts and behind the net. So far, Florida State and North Carolina, they've, they've given them some opportunities, but maybe it's been the missed opportunities that have been the biggest difference. And in particular for Florida State, they just have not been able to get the ball on net as many times as they would probably like. This is the best chance. Anna Patton on the corner by Castellanos. And then even here, Dallas Dorsey got to put that ball probably on the far side. Here's the goal, though, by Rachel Jones. Excellent feed from Russo. Just kisses it off the post. Easy goal, free, past Anna Patton. And that's what gives the Tar Heels the 1-0 lead after the first 45 minutes of play. The Seminoles and the Heels looking at the numbers as how they break down. It's been Florida State with more shots. No shots on goal though for the Knowles. The one shot on goal for Carolina found the back of the net and then 11 combined fouls. What we expected, a physical matchup. No cards yet, but I imagine that's coming pretty soon. It could, it very well could. But for Florida State, they, this has been a little bit of a problem and a nuisance for them. They have not been able to put as many balls on the net as they would have probably liked. They have dominated possession all season long. They've had a lot of shots, but a lot of them have not really had a chance at the net and to score a goal. They've got to figure that out here in the last 45 if they want to have a shot first to equalize and hopefully for them to come out victorious. The Seminoles are undefeated so far this season, but trailing 1-0 to North Carolina. Halftime continues in Tallahassee after this. Can world-renowned artist Red Hong Yi use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank, all while creating a masterpiece made of tea leaves? Yes, but this isn't for just anyone. It's for the strongest man in her life. Life lived Red's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. <sighs> Where are mom and dad? Save money on motorcycle insurance with Geico going up the country. I love mom and dad. Geico Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Our thoughts and prayers are with those right now on the coast of the Carolinas, both North Carolina and South Carolina. Is Florence is no joke. It started as a Category 4 hurricane in the Atlantic, making its way over as a Category 1. Now it's down to Tropical Storm, but this has been... A tragedy already, multiple reported casualties and deaths. And you look at these things, we're used to this in Florida, but it's really impacted the Carolinas who don't get them as, as frequent. UNC, of course, canceling classes in the middle of the week. Pretty much every soccer and football game in the Carolinas has been moved around, canceled, or adjusted to later in the season. And of course, you can help in any way you can, but especially by visiting redcross.org to donate to these fellow Americans and then helping out Trevor. Yeah, we, as you mentioned, Aria, you know, for Florida, you know, we certainly see it a heck of a lot more potentially than other parts of the United States. But of course, I think I speak for you and our entire crew, our hearts and prayers go out to the entire Southeast region who is being affected, of course, in North Carolina. And I think a special commendability to Rick Scott, the governor of Florida, sending a lot of power trucks up to the North Carolina, South Carolina region. These, these people do an amazing job trying to get people reestablished with their lives, bringing power, energy, food, water, whatever they can do to really get people back to, you know, a positive way of thinking and to get their lives back in track. So good job on the state of Florida, and we hope the best for everybody in the Southeast region. 
We hope you've evacuated, but if you have not and still have power in your home, we hope that this broadcast is able to get you through the storm just a little bit. Halftime continues. night in Tallahassee you got Seminoles supporting Seminoles as members of the Florida State volleyball team out at the Seminole soccer complex it's 1-0 North Carolina here at the half the sixth ranked Tar Heels leading the number two ranked Seminoles and while Florence has caused havoc on the coast we obviously want everyone to be kept safe it's going to make a wrench in the plans of scheduling things in the future ACC soccer this weekend being affected. The Eagles and the Deacons. Virginia, Virginia Tech, that's a rivalry out in Blacksburg that has been postponed. Louisville and Pittsburgh will be playing on Sunday. And Clemson able to get their game in against Miami. I was told earlier that Florida State's game against Notre Dame has actually been moved up a day so that they can accommodate some of these reschedulings. That game was in two weeks. It's supposed to be on a Friday. They moved it up to a Thursday. The ACC, status quo, one of the best conferences in soccer, Florida State number two, and then UVA, UNC, Duke, and NC State. Nine wins for the conference over the top 25, 72% winning percentage, and seven players on the Mac Herman Trophy watch list. It's been, it's, been the, it's been the ACC and the Pac-12. And tonight you've got two of the best teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference ready for the second half. They are just moments away. It's the Heels and the Knolls. We'll have an answer coming up in the second half. The Infiniti QX50's revolutionary VC turbo engine has the power of a V6 and the efficiency of a four-cylinder. How did Germany not do that first? Well, if you can't beat them. The all-new 2019 Infiniti QX50. There's nothing traditional about it. Capital city of the Sunshine State. There's the look of the capital. It's Florida State and North Carolina getting ready for the second half. Mark Krikorian and Anson Dorrance's squad. A gritty first half for both teams. Florida State with six shots. UNC with four, but it's been the Tar Heels' only goal of the game on their only shot on frame all game that's been the difference. And these two teams, as has been the case the last few years, the top two in the preseason coaches poll. North Carolina picked to win it. Florida State picked to finish second. Interestingly enough, though, Florida State had more first place votes by the ACC coaches than North Carolina did, but the point total system gave Carolina the edge. And this game always impacts the ACC tournament and those standings, and then, of course, always impacts NCAA tournament standings. Yeah, for who wants the home field and who wants to just represent the ACC, one of the strongest conferences out there in women's soccer across the country. A lot of pride on the line. Certainly, you want to go out and you. This is the game both of these squads have marked, I think, especially with how good Florida State's been the last decade. UNC certainly recognizes that, and they've come in here in these first 45 minutes as we get things ticked off with an edge and, a, and an aggressiveness that has 
really one over Florida State. Andrew Jeske taking one off the face. Able to race down is Brooke Bollinger. He got a shot there in the opening sequences of the half of Samantha Leshnack, who's back in the net. So for the first time all season, Anson Dorrance elects to keep his first half keeper in the game. A whistle and a handball is Otto guilty. But Dorrance staying with Leshnack, first time all year. He's let her do that. Yeah, he, he recognizes that Dickey needs to get some time, of course, knowing that she's going to probably be the keeper for the next several years. But in a game of this magnitude with conference stakes on the line, you got to get put in who's the best keeper that gives you the best chance to win. And certainly Leshnack has earned that by starting every match. McFarlane got a foot on that one. Not able to direct it towards goal. Eshnack has no issues. Leshnack in her 36th game is a Tar Heel. 13 shutouts in her career, including one last season. The 1 0 win over Florida State right here in Tallahassee. Nearly gives the ball away. McFarland, though, coming back from offside, and she knew it. Yeah, had to, had to work back fast if she wanted a chance at the ball, but Tillman knocking that down really didn't give McFarland any sort of shot. Couldn't control the ball. Go right back to UNC. Two of the all-time great coaches in college soccer going at it tonight. Mark Krikorian and Anson Dorrance. McFarland finds Tillman. Tillman a little impatient with that, and Carl not able to get onto it. But Krikorian has said that he seeks Dorrance's counsel. These are two coaches. It's very common in all sports. The best coaches in the game, they do talk, and... They love to pick each other's brains on, on what works and what doesn't, especially not just on tactics, but opponents that teams have faced as they get into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they just have mutual respect for one another, I think, is what starts that. You know, understanding where they've come from and the respect and the pedigree they've earned over those last several years, of course, for, for Dorrance, you know, 40 years of history with UNC alone just speaks for itself and what Gregorian has done for FSU, turning them into a an every year power team and a force to be reckoned with just goes to show that the ideas are certainly going to bounce off one another to talk about how much success they've had. UNC throw in to the displeasure of the thousands here in the stands. UNC now, Andrew Jeske finds some space. Bollinger comes up, ball still loose. Still in danger and finally cleared away, Bollinger. Oh, she's lucky there. Andrew Juski could have had a shot at the net before it got to Bollinger. She's gonna charge a little harder, maybe got it past her, but a little nerves right there from the redshirt freshman and Bollinger. Andrew Juski certainly got a foot in there though to kind of make Bollinger, you know, kind of tighten, tighten that grip a little bit and the ball slips out. Pinto now from about 20 yards will have a go, deflected. Dangerous position again. The heels earn a corner kick. Sometimes if you're on the road and maybe you have a one goal advantage, you have the lead in the second half, maybe you die it down a little bit, you try to keep, play keep away. That's just not the style of the Tar Heels. Number six in the country with how many national championships they've, they've earned, won. They understand what it takes to win and that's by continuing to put the pedal to the metal. A lot of Wuben Moy, a low drive, intercepted. McFarland has nobody in attack. And now Florida State will have to build. Tillman, if she's able to turn, she's not. She had Carl running wide open on the right flank. Castellanos up the middle as well, calling for the ball. McFarland, a little clumsy with the ball, loses it, but still loses. 
as Har Heel went down. Yeah, McFarland a little out of position. Normally you see her up top, but working back to the ball for others to build for her. Again, Florida State just not technically clean tonight. In the final third, they're not able to really possess the ball the way they have. Now with a quality team like UNC, if you're just even the slightest bit off, they're too experienced, they're too knowledgeable, they're too skilled for you to get away with mistakes like that. And you're not going to get the opportunities, and you're not going to be able to build the way you want. Carolina's work rate tonight from all its players has been outstanding. Forwards are getting back to help in defense getting up the field when they have to. It's been a very organized performance from North Carolina so far. Nothing flashy. But together as one unit, they've been able to build a lead so far, 1-0. Tillman and McFarland run into each other. Florida State just discombobulated so far here in the second half. And when you don't have the amount of possessions that FSU is used to having, you're, you're gonna, those mistakes still happen and you're not gonna get the chances to come back. But a nice job. By Pavlisko charging up. Pavlisko taking it on herself, one on one. Strong defending by the Tar Heels. Balser says it was clean. Well, nice job by Quika though to intercept. Now and Quika finds some space. Coming right back up the left side. And perhaps Florida State's going to have to put the pedal to the metal and not try and build slowly out of the back. Take those pockets of space and try and exploit them as they come in the counter. Carl drives left, trying to beat her man off the dribble. She's cut off by Otto, beautifully. Throw in for Florida State. An aggressive game as we expected. Trevor Pavlisko driving the ball about 50 yards up the field herself, and then a hard tackle, but a clean tackle there. A lot of wounded Moy able yeah. to dispossess Florida State. Is that? Free kick goes, or that pass or that cross goes wide right. Absolutely, it was a clean tackle and very aggressive fall by Pavlisko. As she obviously came in with a lot of speed and you get dispossessed like that and you trip even the slightest, it may look so nasty that maybe the defender had something to do with it, but right there, pretty clean tackle and a good no call. McFarland, first touch lets her down, but the aggressiveness and the effort leads to possession. Now Castellanos a step slow. Jones coming up nicely job from behind. And Jones is playing forward. I'm telling you what, these Tar Heels have committed to a plan and they've all stuck to it excellent. Well, they're not just good at their own positions, are they? They're very flexible, they're very versatile as well. I mean, you look at a, look at a Taylor Otto alone. When we were talking to Coach Durant, I mean, he said she can play all three levels. She can play all three positions, and she's usually up top, but they've got her in the middle today. They're just so flexible and versatile. They all, as you said, commit to one purpose and to as one team to come away victorious, and that's what just makes UNC so hard to defeat. Andrew Jeske looking for Russo. Russo's had a quiet night so far in the middle. But she is one of the main reasons why they have that goal. Feeding Rachel Jones on the run. Fox, now Pinto. Little one-two between the duo. Castellanos getting down and dirty. She fires it up ahead. Very nice sliding tackle. Maybe FSU wants to incorporate that long ball a little bit. It's really been difficult for them to really run through the middle tonight. North Carolina working very well in numbers and marking, doing a nice job maintaining the one-on-one -on -one battles. Maybe if you find something, if you turn the ball over, you get a quick run by somebody like a Castellanos, maybe if Villalobos comes off the bench or a Zhao, maybe they can make UNC pay. Krikorian wanted to find a way to dictate the tempo in this game and enjoy some possession in UNC's half. They have not been able to do that tonight. We got up ahead, now McFarland. And again, her first touch letting her down. Yeah, she's had a tough time and struggled knocking and trapping the ball 
on pretty fast and long passes. Now another ball ahead. Russo down the right side, speed on display. Bollinger there, near post. Nice distribution from Bollinger, now Berkeley. That's a, another poor pass. Berkeley's been a little off tonight too. She's usually short-footed and a very crisp passer, but a couple times in the second half right there where she's just missed the mark to Zhao. You don't get the feeling Florida State's been very crisp at all as a team. And that's just what North Carolina brings. In every game, at least that we've seen, Aria, you, FSU has been able to really dictate pace. They really have not been challenged and really haven't had an opponent battle them for the ball in their own half. UNC does that, and they make them work to get to the levels that they want to get to. And when, by the time they try to build to that final part, they just haven't been able to establish that and be crisp enough in the end. The only other team this season that we've covered so far, Trevor, that's been similar in style, probably USC. The Florida State's defense was able to keep the Trojans off the score sheet in that one. Similar game styles, though. But in, but in saying that, FSU still had 18 shots. I mean, FSU only has seven, as we have about 30 minutes or so left in this match. So UNC has done the best job against Florida State's attack by far this season. Denying them chances, denying them quality possession time, or at least in a quantity amount, for sure. The Gators obviously also sticking to a game plan that tried to limit Florida State's offensive opportunities, but I think it's safe to say that the Tar Heels have a little bit more attacking talent than Florida was able to show on Friday night. Rachel Jones, her first career goal so far has been the difference. Part of a lineup change that has seen her move into the lineup. And Alessia Russo moving to center forward. Now another great ball, Bailey. Bumped away by Patton. And that's what Doran said that they learned on the West Coast. He said, we suffered. We took our knocks and lost twice. We paid the price, but we found out a lineup that we think is going to work for us and something we're excited about going forward. And sometimes, and, you, and the saying goes, you learn a lot more from your losses than you do your victories. And in, in, that's where this is kind of a blessing in disguise when you lose a couple times like UNC has against very good quality opponents, no less. Certainly nothing you can really, you know, put your head, in, head down in shame about. But it makes you better, it makes you stronger, and that's kind of what they've learned in their putting that together in this match against the number two team in the country. But of course, Durant, you know, being as experienced as he has for as many years as his coach, he knows all the tricks in the book. So the Lobos checks in for Yuji Zhao. And it's been that strong non-conference scheduling that both of these programs have embodied and, and embraced. Anson Dorrance saying that that's what he appreciated about Mark Krokorian when he first came into the league as the head coach of Florida State was that he felt like other ACC coaches were so focused on getting W's that nobody wanted to play tough competition and perhaps risk the loss. Corian though, has done that this season, obviously. North Carolina has always done that, and I think now the ACC's followed suit, and that's why the RPIs are so high. And I believe that's a, it speaks to a not being afraid of failure, not being afraid to take a loss and really challenge and drive yourself to where eventually you could be that top squad that you want to be. And that's what you have to admire about both these coaches, but especially, and especially Mark McCorian in the last several years, building FSU up. Offside, the call is Fox was making a run down the left side. And again, another poor pass by Florida State. Well, also a lack of awareness by Tillman right there. She turned her head upfield, didn't realize the ball was coming her way, and didn't act upon it. And Tillman, just by judging the body language, looks a little tired. And this one, you wonder if Krikorian sees that as well and will make a substitution. But Tillman breathing a little heavy, a little slower moving to the ball right now. And now coming into the game is Bergau. Now it's a challenge. I mean, that, you look at UNC's midfield alone. I mean, you got Otto, you got... Bailey alone. I mean, those, that's a lot of wealth of experience and skill amongst those two players alone. It's challenging for FSU's midfield. Pinto strong against Patton. She takes the ball away. Yeah, FSU just hasn't been pushed like this. Not one time all season. 
And the game plan from North Carolina, exceptionally effective. Stopping Florida State's attack and then diagonal runs and using the speed to create. It's already led to one goal by Rachel Jones. Her first as a Carolina Tar Heel in her career. Another offside is Russo getting caught behind the Seminole defense. It just speaks to the commitment that Anson Durant, Anson Durant has for his squad and working all phases of the game, not just offense, because that can be an easy part for players, you know, wanting to score goals, putting your team up ahead. The commitment you have on the defensive side as well, attacking and wanting that ball back, wanting to win and disrupting that opportunity for your opponents to come away with the score. That's the desire that UNC has had for 40 years, and it's why they've had those 21 national championships in Division I. Tillman in the center of the field, drops it back to Howell. Howell has had six shots in her last two games as this slipped through too heavy for Bergal. That's a, that's a very good angle, very good pass by Villalobos, and she kind of needed to put all of that weight into that pass to get it through, just missing the mark. Kimball in for Fox. And Arya Masudi and Trevor DeGroat, our ACC Network Extra crew from Tallahassee. Top 10 soccer, number two Florida State, number six North Carolina. The Tar Heels able to get out of the state of North Carolina down here before Florence hit the coast. Pinto has her ball deflected by Berkeley. And Florida State's been great hosts for North Carolina this weekend. The Heels still do try and plan to leave tomorrow whether that's on a plane or busing, Doran's in the program want to get out of Tallahassee if they can. Yeah, they obviously had that West Coast road trip and were only able to spend a couple more days in North Carolina at Chapel Hill before making the trip over here to Tallahassee. So they certainly want to be home in their own beds and their own homes. Via Lobos has her pass sniffed out as Good thing for the Tar Heels is they play Pitt on September 20th. So they'll have a few days to readjust and get ready for soccer next week. Strong shot, side of the net. Well, there's that powerful strike on display that we alluded to. My goodness, Alessio Russo. Alessio Russo. By Russo, absolutely. On the run, gap was closing, but my goodness, she could certainly turn, shoot, drive that ball off the side of the net. Bollinger, though. Excellent positioning. Certainly not taking anything for chance and letting that ball go by. Russo, an all ACC first team member last season, second team All American, and she enters the year on the Matt Herman watch list. She's uh, struggled a little bit, though, this season finding the back of the net. And like Kristen McFarland, though, you have the feeling once she finds it a single time, the floodgates will open. Alicia Russo is one of the most talented players in the country and well on her way to joining the English team national team, the, the senior national team ranks. And you can even say the same thing for FSU's Dana Castellanos. While she does have a goal, it's only one goal, and she's had more opportunities to play this season with FSU and her team. So a couple of these top Herman watch list contenders, you know, not exactly lighting up the scoreboard, but I think that's okay because, you know, it speaks to the teamwork I think both of these teams have and how many different threats you can have, and it keeps people guessing. It keeps, it's ultimately about the team and how you make your team better. Bergal looking for Patton. And again, Florida State's just been one step too slow all night. UNC has been comfortable with dropping back just a little bit, but as soon as Florida State enters within 30 yards of the net, the pressure intensifies. And the Knolls have not handled that well tonight. Struggling to put two and three passes together in a row. Perhaps it's an individual effort. A moment of magic is all Florida State will need tonight. And if not, the Tar Heels will have their third straight win over the Seminoles and second straight in Tallahassee. Well, just, just, it's just a matter of being pushed. And FSU is getting its biggest challenge you just have to sometimes learn to push back, and they haven't really had that this season yet. In every single game, 
They've been able to have, they've won the possession in terms of percentages and ball control. They've had, they haven't really been challenged by their back line, even in their midfield too much to where they're really getting a, a, a sense of fear of having the ball being taken away from them. And then on the flip side, having the charge going back and scoring. This is just their biggest challenge of the season by far. UNC is the team they circle on their calendar and they're getting everything they can or everything they could have prob probably expected from the Tar Heels tonight. North Carolina program with excellent pedigree and a name of who's who's in women's soccer. The likes of obviously Mia Hamm and Christine Lilly, but Heather O'Reilly, Crystal Dunn, Tobin Heath, Kat Whitehill. And we could probably have an entire broadcast on just how many names they've put into the professional ranks and into the U.S. senior national team level. You could probably put UNC's all-time best players that have made pro and probably taken the best of the rest around the country who've made it, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a better squad. It'd be really difficult to find. UNC is just that much of a, a powerhouse. And it's that man who's molded each and every one of them. 22-time national champion, Anson Dorrance. A member of the National Soccer Hall of Fame inducted at the same time Bruce Arenas was, and that's good company to be in. Howell with the head, finds McFarlane. Now Bergal. Bergal sends it into the middle of the box. It's deflected. 23 minutes and change left in Tallahassee. Florida State finally had some room to work the ball down into that position, but once again, didn't find the right pocket of space where they wanted to go with the ball. And UNC doing what they've done all night, fend off Florida State from a chance at the net. Not one shot of those seven for Florida State has gone on net. Michaela Edwards checking into the game. And Sydney Sproul does the same for North Carolina. Poor pass. This ball into the center. Russo has it. Wants it to her right foot. Bumped off the ball and an excellent job. Malia Berkeley comes up huge for Florida State. Russo shaken up too. Russo still on the ground. She slowly gets to her feet. Bollinger comes across to tend to her for just a moment and check on her. Quika comes from the right side and just puts a little bump towards the right, but I think it's Berkeley's slide tackle and maybe even Bollinger on the back side here. Maybe in the back. It might be a leg though as well. Maybe she hyperextended the leg a little bit, but she seems to be okay. Maybe going for the right leg, I think, trying to walk it off. Pinto does very well in the corner, right at the flag, and she earns a corner kick for North Carolina. Pinto was a member of the U-20 World Cup team for the United States this summer in France. One of the best freshmen in college soccer. The highest ranked recruits. Middle of the box, Bollinger has to do well, and she grabs it. Morgan Goff got ahead on that. One of the better corners we've seen from UNC in limited amounts tonight. It just goes to show how, how many chances and how many different ways they can score. A plethora of opportunities. Very creative. Only the second save of the night for Bollinger, who hasn't been asked to do a whole heck of a lot, giving up that one goal to Rachel Jones, but not a lot of opportunities for the Heels tonight. Bollinger named ACC Co-Defensive Player of the Week this past week for a pair of shutouts against the Gators in South Alabama. North Carolina really congesting the middle of the field right now for Florida State, and the Knowles are struggling to find an answer. 
And you can just see a little bit. FSU has got a little bit of hints of doubt at times. They haven't been as committed. I think they've been a little bit cautious in how they want to attack. Wika tries to knock the ball ahead. It's taken away to the feet of Patton. Now Quika stops on a dime. Now Villalobos. Bergau. Now Patton, she sends it into the middle of the box. Cleared away. Berkeley does well to find Patton. Very nice work along the touchline. Patton, now Bergau. Villalobos. Tillman. Patton retreats to Berkeley. Berkeley sends it to the middle of the box. Not a bad ball, headed up into the air. Villalobos, a whistle and a foul. Tillman called for cutting underneath. And these are the kind of moments in the areas where you'd like to probably see a little bit of interplay or combo play amongst two or three players, but FSU really has so much skill that they depend on individuals a lot. We've seen that, obviously, and they've won. They've won with that, and they've been successful with that, but at points, at points in, in this season, you, you wonder, though, if you can organize a little bit better collectively as a unit, working together, and they seem to be trying to look for that perfect look or that perfect pocket of space, perfect pass or cross individually, though. If they can work it together, things could open up for them naturally in a triangle formation of some sort where they work in a combo play. I haven't seen a whole lot of Yuji Zhao and Dana Castellanos in the second half for Florida State. And those are two of the top players the Knowles have in terms of creating their own chances. You have to imagine they'll both factor in at some point here in the rest of the game. Gregorian probably saving them both at this point. Point Both are on the bench. Probably want to save them in case FSU cannot get that equalizing score. It's come through in the waning minutes. Villalobos. Out wide now, Pat. Making the overlapping run. She sends it into the middle of the box. It's a good one. Headed away, Julia Ashley. A bit too strong. McFarland was veering in towards the center. Now another opportunity headed away again. Just went over her head. North Carolina has come up huge time and time again. Florida State now starting to enjoy a little bit more possession than they had in the first half. And they've had a lot more freedom. There's a lot more open spaces for Florida State to work, but it's just plays like that once again that UNC puts themselves in perfect position and flips the field. Kimball one-on-one -on -one against Michaela Edwards. Oh, beautiful job by Kimball. Keeps her feet, continues. Great balance. Now a late run. It's Ashley finding back of the post shot. Oh, that was just the opportunity. Russo. You know she wants that goal. She really is looking for it. They've gone to her a couple of times. Just missed the mark left. Dorsey comes in for McFarlane. But if you're Alessia Russo, you have got to find a way, I think, to put that ball in the back of the net. That is as clean of an opportunity as you're going to find. No defenders within yards. And I think Russo just was surprised at how open she was and shanked it. Yeah, had the opportunity to really put this game potentially on ice. Set it in stone with a two-goal lead. Dorian Bailey into the ball game for UNC now. Villalobos. Now Edwards. Pavlisko. Looking for Dorsey up ahead. Dorsey cuts back. Ashley there. Wubin Moy. Now Patton cuts it off. Top of the 18. Her shot blocked. Excellent tackle from Edwards. Things starting to opening up for both teams. It's Villalobos, nice beautiful play. piece of skill. Excellent flick to control. Bergau. Kimball comes up huge as she stiffs her. Just a beautiful job of awareness by Florida State, especially Anna Patton for keeping possession in the attacking half. Beautiful footwork by Villalobos. Middle of the box. And Villalobos had an amazing cross. 
Don't know if we caught that, but it was across an amazing diving stop by Leshnak. Certainly the biggest piece of athleticism we've seen out of her tonight. As we're going to see it here, Villalobos gets free towards the end line, crosses. Leshnak comes out of the box trying to punch it out and does a beautiful job of it too. Perhaps Dallas Dorsey in the center there, keeping her from a header opportunity. But Florida State certainly putting the pressure on now. I think they've really gotten a chance to really open things up, play a little longer. UNC, though, still holding strong. The Tar Heels have forced Florida State to speed the process up a little bit. The Knowles have not handled it well. Russo drives a shot well wide of the net. Well, didn't get the bend that she would have wanted. Just a straight shot, far post, way out wide. Ten shots for Carolina, eight for Florida State. Seminoles just two shots here in the second half. As Jones comes back in for Kimball. Not a lot of quality opportunities for Florida State. Quika heads it back. Bollinger races to grab it. Under 14 to go. Florida State's running out of time. 1-0 Carolina. A mirror of last year in Tallahassee when the Tar Heels scored a goal and were able to hold on to snap a 36-game unbeaten streak for the Seminoles here at the Seminole Soccer Complex. North Carolina, it would be their first road win of the season. And a building block for Carolina. Wooten Moy drives it upfield. Andrew Jesk gets ahead on it. In the end, the ball goes out for a Seminole throw in. And a slew of substitutions coming for Florida State. We were wondering about Chow and Castellanos. Here they come. Along with Jalen Howell and Casey Tillman. Well, it's interesting. They have Chow right now positioned right with McFarland. This is Florida State's. Last stand, you have to think. 12 minutes to go. And at what point do you abandon the possession style game and know that that's not happening tonight and just try and start sending long balls? I think that probably ended when UNC went up one goal. Here's a shot. It's again Russo. As we've detailed, she can strike from long distance, tried to prove it there, just way too much air. But yeah, Florida State's going to have to go on the attack and you really have to put everything you can into putting together a run that works best, whether that be long ball, whether that's working up the flanks a little bit, but UNC's done a nice job in that regard. You really haven't seen FSU work up the wings. And they're spread out wide to begin with with that formation of theirs. Something FSU I don't think is really used to, at least not this season anyway. Pinto loses the ball out. Florida State throw in. Carl weaving her way through the Carolina defense, trying to take her on, take her team on one-on-one. -on -one. It's a corner for Florida State, set-piece opportunity. This is one of the areas of soccer in which, not to make it a play on words, but you can equalize. Well, with Dana Castellanos taking it, I mean, she has been extremely accurate. Well, I don't believe a corner has gone in for her this season. Boy, she's been putting it right in the right spot. Castellanos bends it in. Leshnak, how about that? Strong hands from the senior. Howell and McFarland trying to go up for it. Once again, Castellanos putting it in a dangerous spot. But Leshnak, the senior, very aware, very savvy, and aggressive to come down with that ball.
Carl does well in tight space to earn a free throw, excuse me, a throw in. What a win by Pinto. Now Pinto, one on two. Jones giving her a diagonal run. Spins, gets it to her right foot. It's blocked. Berkeley clears. And Zhao needs to do the same and does. And Jones showing some skill right there with a couple of jukes. And, and Fox goes down, and I think Nick Balser fell for it. Not much contact there, but Fox able to draw a free kick. Uh, looked like it was Tillman trying and challenging for the ball. There is nothing there. That is not a foul. Fox losing her balance as Tillman was trying to... A little name R action there. Yeah, a little, yep. Savvy play by the senior, Emily Fox, leads to a North Carolina set-piece opportunity. Offside called, and it'll go Florida State's way. Nice job by Jalen Howell, though, getting in position to interrupt that cross. But time is of the essence now. With under nine to go, FSU is, cannot waste a moment of time as we have to bring it back, trying to get a fast start. Berkeley drives the ball up the field. McFarland not able to get there. And McFarland not known for her speed. I mean, you're gonna have to put, if you're gonna go to McFarland, you're gonna probably have to give it to her right on point and let her try and work the ball Make a quick cut, turn, and shoot. Leshnack powers the ball upfield. Howell. Now Patton and Pinto battling for it. Excellent job by the heels. Fox finds some space on the left side. Carries it forward near the 18. Across Bollinger. Sturdy with it. Now looks to distribute and spark a Florida State counter. Yeah, good outlet and to the right person as well, Dana Castellanos. Not a poor pass, though. Florida State, they just seem so uncomfortable when it's not been enjoying all the possession in the attacking third. Florida State is something that I'm sure Mark Recorian will work on in the, in the middle of the week. But tonight, Carolina has taken Florida State out of their comfort zone, and Florida State, quite frankly, up until this point, has just not responded. No, only one or two shots in this first or this second half compared to the six or seven they had in the first. And while I think FSU's moved the ball a little bit better than they did in these last 45 minutes, they just haven't been able to put a lot of chances on net. They had a few good ones earlier on in this match. Berkeley, middle of the box. Zhao going up for it. It's headed up. Carolina again clears. Now Castellanos. Quica racing onto it. Does well to knock it forward to herself. And Goff there. Now McFarlane. A sea of blue around her. Villalobos. Finds Castellanos. Uh, put that ball a little bit further up as be a throw in for UNC. Fia Lobos feeds Castellanos a little more up towards the box. Maybe she can tee one up and shoot it, drive it, because we know Castellanos can score from distance as well. And it may take something like that at this point. UNC may lay back a little bit. They've done an excellent job thus far. If you can find maybe a slight open space a little bit further past the 18. Maybe that's what you can find and, and come away with. Howell, her pass too heavy. Now Quica. Can Florida State find an answer? The equalizer here as we approach five minutes to go. Five and change. Berkeley. Wants to carry it up the field herself. And then jukes herself out. Goes off that left heel. Not what she wanted. FSU will have to hit the reset button. Florida State, since 2011, 83 and four.
Just three losses in Tallahassee since 2011. North Carolina threatening to make it a fourth. A nine match unbeaten streak so far for the Seminoles here this season. And they're running out of time. Zhao to Tillman. Tillman surveys and now finds Howell. Castellanos. Pavlisko. McFarlane. This is better from Florida State. Chipped up. Leshnack there. Yeah, nice floater by Villalobos to allow Tillman to break free a little bit, but just too squared, too easy for Leshnack. And I must say, this is by one of, by far, one of Yuji Zhao's most more quieter games this season. We really have not seen her with the ball at all. I think UNC has done an amazing job keeping her away from the ball possession and having a big impact on this match. Now Jones, as it stands, she will have the game winner. Jones shoved in the back, strong, and a no call. Strong challenge by Quika. Boy, Quika really, the senior, really driving that left shoulder against Jones. Berkeley up ahead, Tillman off the top of her head. Leshnack again there. And now UNC will probably milk the clock a bit. Three and a half, under three and a half now. They'll certainly find an opportunity back on the attack if they can see one. But the name of the game for them, at least at this point, is keep away. Patton. Up ahead to Tillman, and she just doesn't have the pace to get to it. Yeah, she, you could tell, look on her face. She, she was, is gassed. She was frustrated. That ball was way out of her reach. Did not like it. Florida State's put in a lot of work here today, but they've come up empty so far. Tillman showing signs of fatigue, as is the rest of the Seminole roster. Pinto could, to the corner flag. You can see Berkeley, Quica, they've been running all night long, too. Other than the one goal by Rachel Jones, neither team has really had a whole lot of opportunities in this. Excellent job so far by both teams' defenses to sniff out opportunities. And again, it's been one moment of brilliance so far tonight. And that's all you need in these ACC games against top-level competition. You need just that one spark. That one little opening in the wall that you can find and just take a shot at. That could be the... The resonating punch, the resonating moment that comes away with victory in soccer. And UNC took advantage of it with about two minutes left. Florida State looking for theirs. Zhao looking for some help, finds McFarlane. McFarlane touches and turns, now Howell. Howell wants Patton. It's to her feet. Patton tries to put a move on Fox. Fox does well. Fox just too quick, living up to her last name. And now she puts on the Jets, and Quika there to take it away. Quika, middle of the box, Leshnack, skies, and grabs. And to the turf she goes as she will try and kill some time. One and a half left. Knowles bringing up McFarland, Powell, or, Howell, or Carl, I should say, and Castellanos. But none of them had a chance. Leshnack, beautiful job all night long, especially here in this second half. Zhao again slips it beautifully to Villalobos. One minute to go. Maybe their last chance. And yeah, just a lot of indecision by Florida State. And again, nobody for Florida State able to bring the ball down as we are 40 seconds away. In fact, I think Zhao and McFarland were almost fighting for themselves for the ball on that opportunity to have one in. Leshnack will just blast it forward. Berkeley now under 30 seconds. Got to hit a long ball here. The Tar Heels have won two in a row against Florida State. Looking to make it three. 
Florida State oh so good in Tallahassee. Undefeated so far this year. But in trouble as Tillman sends the ball into the box. Waiting moments, back post. Into the air it goes, Leshnack there. And that will do it. North Carolina, Anson Dorrance and the Heels have stormed into Tallahassee and taken a 1-0 win over Florida State. What a feather in the cap for the Heels resume. The NCAA RPI, number six, North Carolina, one, Florida State, nil, the first loss of the year for Florida State. And Mark Krikorian, the Heels move to 6-2-1 and one on the year. Now 1-0 and oh in the ACC, Florida State, 7-1-1. and one. Now 0-1 oh in the ACC. Dorrance has gotten the upper hand now on Krikorian in the last three matchups, but you have a feeling these teams are going to see each other again this season. Yeah, you can imagine that. They're very, I mean, equally in terms of talent, they're so smart, they're so dynamic. So UNC gets the victory tonight, very well earned, but certainly Florida State, I think, will learn from this and really make a chance and really do a nice job of charging back and putting together more quality matches. So for Trevor DeGroat, I'm Mario Masudi saying so long from Tallahassee where North Carolina defeats Florida State 1-0. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games in our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN.